Welcome to chapter 6, Probability and Counting. We are using the text Discovering Statistics by Hawks, Math 108, and this is Dr. Gilbert Iyabi. The goal of this lecture is to solve some problems for you from chapter 6. As a matter of fact, from the first part of chapter 6, which deals with probability. We would cover counting in class, and I may also produce a lecture on the second part of chapter 6. So let's go ahead and look at a couple of problems. As a matter of fact, I have put together some problems that would span the entire first part of chapter 6. So going through this video, you should be able to complete all your Hawks assignments from chapter 6, part 1, probability. Let's go ahead and start. Question number 1. There are 239 identical plastic chips numbered 1 through 239 in the box. What is the probability of reaching into the box and randomly drawing the chip numbered 171? You have to read the question very carefully. It says drawing the chip, just one chip. So the probability of that happening would be number of chips number 171 divided by the total number of chips. And in this case, there is only one chip number 171. So my answer would be 1 divided by 239, which is 0 0.0042. And we would leave our rounding to four decimal places starting now. Every problem involving probability, we expect you to round to four decimal places. Okay, that was question one. Let's move over to question two. A standard six-sided die is rolled. Like I mentioned before, I expect everyone to have a couple of dies with you at all times. At least you can have the soft version on your iPad. So a standard six-sided die is rolled. What is the probability of rolling a number greater than four? Again, read the question very carefully. Greater than four means it could be five or six. By the way, we start off with the sample space S. We list out all the possible outcomes, which would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Greater than 4 would be 5 and 6. Remember the four or so words I told you you have to remember? Greater than, less than, at least, at most, and exactly, as a matter of fact, 5. You have to remember the definitions of these words. So that would be 2 divided by 6, which is 1 third, and that would be 0.333, 4 decimal places. And number three, a box contains 59 red, 84 white, and 73 blue. If a marble is randomly selected from the box, what is the probability that it is red? The probability that the marble would be red equals the number of red marbles we have in the box divided by the total number of marbles we have in the box. And we have 59 red, and all together we have 59 plus 84 plus 73, which is 216. So my answer would be 59 divided by 216. Again, in four decimal places, it will be 0.2731. Beautiful. Number four, what is the probability of ruling a sum of nine on a standard pair of six-sided dice? Again, Remember, you have to know what exactly means. Greater than, less than, at least, at most. Sum of 9 means exactly 9. Recall what I said in class, our sample space. We have our two dice, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And these are all the possible sums we can get if we were to roll these two dice. We need a sum of exactly 9. So we count 1, 2, 3, 4. There are 4 possible outcomes that would give us exactly 9. So that would be 4 divided by, and there are 36 outcomes altogether. So my answer is 4 divided by 36, or 1 divided by 9, or in 4 decimal places, that would be 0.1111. We are missing a one right here. I think I must have deleted it by error. Okay, number five. Write out the sample space for the given experiment. Use the following letters to indicate each choice. O for olives, M for mushrooms, T, S, F, and R. We're deciding what you want to put into a salad for dinner at a restaurant. You will choose one of the following extra toppings. 
O or M, and then you would add the following meat, T or S, and lastly, you would decide on which of the following dressings, F or R. A simple tree diagram will give you all the possible eight options, just like we did in class. I am going to make this file available for you on Canvas, both the video and the PDF file itself. So feel free to download the file, print it out, and study the solution, and ask me questions if you got lost anywhere while watching the video. Number six, decide if the following probability is classical, relative frequency, or subjective. You guess. You can pause right there. Remember, subjective probability is an educated guess. You guess that there is a 40% chance that you will be assigned homework in your chemistry class on Tuesday. Of course, that is subjective probability because it's an educated guess. Maybe from past experience, you are able to figure out that there's a 40% chance that we will be assigned homework in our chemistry class next Tuesday. Subjective probability. Number seven, an eight-sided die which may or may not be fair has four colors on it. And you have been tossing the die for an hour and this is what we have. Yellow came up 49 times, green came up 32 times, blue came up 28 times, and pink came up 31 times. What is the probability that if you roll the die, you would roll a yellow on the next toss? So you have the die, you've been rolling for all this while, relative frequency probability. What is the probability that if you roll, you would get a yellow? Well, it's the probability of yellow, which is the number of yellows you've had so far, divided by the number of rolls you've made. And that will be 49 divided by 49 plus 32 plus 28 plus 31, which is 140, and that's 0 0.3500. So the chance of getting a yellow is less than 0.5. You probably shouldn't bet your money on it. Number eight, you're going to play mini golf. The machine contains 18 green, 19 red, 19 blue, and 20 yellow golf balls, and it randomly gives you a ball. What is the probability that you end up with a blue ball? Easy. Number of blue balls divided by the total number of balls in the machine, and that would be 19 divided by 18 plus 19 plus 19 plus 20, which is 76. And my answer is 0 0.2500. Beautiful. Question number nine. A card is drawn from a standard deck of 52 cards. Again, I expect you to learn contents of a deck of cards. If you do not have a deck of cards and you are not sure of the content, please buy a deck of cards. You need to know the various divisions, how a deck of cards is divided. Number of blacks, number of reds, number of diamonds and clubs and so on and so forth. Which one is red? Which one is black? Which one is a face card? I need you to understand this language because you would be expected to answer questions involving decks of cards. What is the probability that the card would be a diamond or a club? You need to know what a diamond is and you need to know what a club is. Are there some diamonds that are clubs? You can only know that answer if you are familiar with the deck of cards. So, one thing I want to remind us here is the word or. That is your addition rule. Probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Please use the formula each time you see the word or and you would never fail a single probability problem involving the addition rule. If you do not, trust me, you're going to fail almost all problems involving or. So the probability that it is a diamond or a club would be the probability that it's a diamond plus the probability that it is a club minus the probability that it is a diamond and a club at the same time. Now, if you do not know much about a deck of cards where there are no diamonds that are clubs at the same time, so the probability that I'm going to find a card that is both diamond and club would be zero because no diamonds are clubs. Therefore, the probability of a diamond or club would be the probability of a diamond plus the probability of a club. There are 13 diamonds, so that would be 13 divided by 52, plus there are 13 clubs, that would be 13 divided by 52, and that gives me 26 divided by 52, which is one half, 0 0.500. 
zero. Okay, that is number nine. Let's move over to number 10. We have, I think, 24 problems to enjoy in this video. Number 10. Number 10 is a little tricky and you will see this very often and I need you to remember how I came up with it. So in turn, you should be able to solve the problem when you see it on Hux. A box contains 11 large marbles, 13 small marbles, and each marble could either be green or white. Four of the large marbles are green and six of the small marbles are white. If a marble is randomly selected from the box, what is the probability that it is large or white? Now, several students have tried solving this, just reading and then start writing, and they never really arrive at the correct answer. The way you do this is, first of all, you come up with a nice little box to break everything down. There are 11 large marbles, so this way I have it right there and there are 13 small marbles and each marble could either be green or white now four of the large marbles are green so right there we have four of these large marbles are green and we also have that six of the small marbles are white so the only boxes that are filled in my table would be four six 11 13 and have all these other spaces left do i start crying because those spaces are empty well i cry a little then i stop because i know something called addition and subtraction if this is four and this is 11 then that is going to be seven if this is six and this is 13 that's going to be seven i can add this up that gives me 11 add this up that gives me 13 add this 24 add this 24 and my little table is complete beautiful now let's use the table and get the answer plus remember the word all so i'm going to use my addition rule always use your addition rule completely so the probability that it is large or white would be the probability that it is large plus the probability that it is white minus the probability that it is large and white at the same time very important and beautiful. So what is the probability that it is large? It's going to be 11 divided by the total, which is 24. What is the probability that it is white? Right here, it will be 13 divided by the total, which is 24. And what is the probability that it is large and white? 7 divided by 24. And since the denominators are the same, it's simply 11 plus 13 minus 7, which is 17 over 24. And that is 0 0.7083 addition rule. Beautiful. Okay, let's proceed. Number 11. Oh, we're almost halfway. A standard pair of six-sided dice is rolled. What is the probability of rolling a sum greater than seven? Again, we bring our little table here that has our sample space. Greater than seven means the sum could either be eight or nine or 10 or 11 or 12. So I count all the options where I have 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and that gives me 15 divided by 36, 5 on 12, 0.4167. Beautiful. Problem number 12. I need you to pay very close attention to problems number 12, 13, 14, I think 15 or so. But in general, problems involving tables like this. 12 is going to be very straightforward, but before we conclude, uh, we will see a few that are very exciting. A newspaper company classifies its customers by gender and location of residence. The research department has gathered data from a random sample of 1897 customers, and the data is summarized in the table below. Males, females, apartments, dorm, parents, that means they live in an apartment, they live in a dorm, they live with their parents, they live in a fraternity or a sorority house, or they live in order. Now, this is my take usually you add all of these that gives you the total number of males all of these the total number of females if you add this you get the total number of students who live in an apartment if you add this you get customers who live in a dorm if you add this you get customers who live with their parents if you add this you get customers who live in a frat house and if you add this you get customers who live in order okay usually it's good to complete the entire table before you start solving the problem because you really don't know exactly what the problem might be asking in this case it's very straightforward but we shall see another example 
example where it's asking you for a little bit more and you would actually need all this information to get the correct answer. In this case, we are asked to find the probability that a customer is male. Well, the number of males is 990 and the total number of customers is 1897. So the probability that a customer is male would be 990 divided by 1897, which is 0.5219 for decimal places and we're done. Very good. Number 13. Same category of problems. A credit card company classifies its customers by gender and location of residence. The research department has gathered data from a random sample of 1,800 customers. Again, we have residents, males, females, we have apartment, dorm with parents, frat house, and other. Again, like I said before, always make sure you get a sum, get a sum, get a sum. So all the rows and all the columns get all their respective sums. Depending on the question that you ask, you might actually need some of these sums. But for this one, I didn't do it because we would not really need any of the sums. What is the probability that a customer is female and lives in order? So the customer is female and lives in order. So that's the intersection between female and order. And there are 259 customers that are females and live in order. So the probability that a customer is female and lives in order would just be 259 divided by the total number of customers, which is 1800. And that gives us 0.143 nine four decimal places and we're done now this question is pretty exciting and it's not even like the top of excitement the next one is way more exciting than this one yet this is also exciting we have males we have females we have apartment dorm parents frat order and the question is simple what is the probability that a customer is female and lives in order or is male and lives in a dorm now several students fail this question in the test and the reason at least from what i've observed is that they really did not use the addition rule they tried to look at it and understand the question in their own way and answer look use the addition rule whenever you see the word oh always remember that the probability of a or b is the probability of a plus the probability of b minus the probability of a and b always use your addition rule so now if you look at this very well oh is right here what comes before oh Female and lives in order. What comes after all? Male and lives in the dorm. So probability that the customer is female and lives in order or male and lives in the dorm equals the probability that the customer is female and lives in order plus the probability that the customer is male and lives in a dorm minus the probability that the customer is a female and lives in order and at the same time the customer is a male and lives in a dorm well this particular example is pretty straightforward because there are no females that are males so the probability that a customer would be a female and lives in order and at the same time that same customer is a male and lives in a dorm would be zero and that is because no males are females no females are males so that is zero therefore i'm left only with the probability that a customer is female and lives in order plus the probability that a customer is male and lives in a dorm which would be these two numbers right here male lives in the dorm 297 divided by 1614 plus 214 divided by 1614 and that gives us 511 divided by 1614 0.3166 to four decimal places and we're done addition rule now let's see even a more exciting problem that involves addition rule a newspaper company classifies its customers again by gender and location of residence we have males females apartment dorm parents frat order and we have our table like i said before we add every row we add all the columns and here would be our completed table 
please always complete the table because it helps. Now, before we even get to the problem, let's remember the whole idea of complement. The probability of not male is one minus the probability of male. Okay, so keep that in your head. For example, the number of males will be 938. So the probability of not male will be one minus the probability of male, which is the total number is 1892 minus 938. Delete this six and transform it to an eight. So that'll be minus 938 divided by 1892 and so on and so forth if i ask you to find the probability of not female you know what it will be probability of not dumb okay it's just one minus the probability of dumb again change that six to an eight sorry about that now what is the probability that a customer is not male or does not live in a frat house wow so many nuts do i start crying no 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 i don't i don't even cry a little bit why because i know what my all is addition rule all i have to do is apply my addition rule consistently and diligently and at the end of the day i'll be smiling so the probability of not male or does not live in a frat house, I take my time. I'm looking for the probability of not male or not frat house. Addition rule, probability of not male plus the probability of not frat house minus the probability of not male and not frat. Okay, write it exactly the way it is. Then now use your table to figure out what those entries would be. Number one, what is the probability of not male? Male. The probability of not male would be 1892 minus 938. Good enough, I have 938. I didn't put 6 again this time around, so that's correct. Divided by 1892 plus probability of not frat. Frat is... 3, 4, 2. So not frat would be 1 minus probability of frat, which is just 1892 minus 343. Three. So probability of not frat would be 1892 minus 343 three divided by 1892 minus, and listen to this, it's the most exciting. The probability that it is not male, the customer is not male and does not live in a frat house. How do I get that figure? Not male means I'm not here, I'm over to the females. Not frat house means I delete this, what is left? 136, 273, 228, 177. That is the probability of not male, not frat, everything else. And that will give us 814 divided by 1892. The denominators are all the same, so I just add 954 plus 1549 minus 814, and that gives me 1689 divided by 1892, which is 0.8927 to 4 decimal places. Done. Beautiful. Please do not fail this question in a test. It's a beautiful question. Okay, let's move on to question number 16. We're going to relax in the next couple of questions. Then we would go over to conditional rule, which I expect you to use very diligently also. Question number 16. Find the outcomes in the complement of the given event. Out of 266 books in the bookcase, 179 are mysteries. The complement would be 266 minus 179, which is 87 done. Question number 18. Describe the complement of the given event. 73% of 19-year-old males are at least 167 pounds. At least means greater than or equal to. So the complement would be less than, not less than or equal to. The intersection between an event and its complement has to be empty. There cannot be any element that is in both E and E complement. So if it is greater than or equal to, the complement has to be less than. Another way to write the complement of at least is just to say not at least, which is probably not really nice enough. But it works. So instead of saying less than, you can just say not at least. And everybody understands that not at least means less than. And of course, the complement of 73 would be 27 because 100 minus 73 is 27%. So it would be 27% of 19-year-old males who are not at least 167 pounds 
or less than 167 pounds. I would prefer less than, but not at least also works. Number 18, determine whether the following events are mutually exclusive events or not. Choosing a heart or a black card. Again, if you do not have a deck of cards, you may not know the difference between a heart and a black card. Is it possible for a heart to be black? Well, I'll leave that for you to verify, but the answer is mutually exclusive. Question number 19. Determine whether the following value would be a probability 27 divided by 17 is greater than 1. I think our very first rule was that the probability would be between 0 and 1, inclusively, of course, put endpoints are included. So greater than 1, that is not the value of a probability. Now let's get back into some more exciting problems. Three cards are drawn with replacement from a standard deck. What is the probability that the first card is a heart, the second is a black card, and the third is a face card? Again, you need your deck of cards to be able to understand what all of these are. So since it is done with replacement, this would actually end up being independent events because I pick the first card and I look at it. Well, in this case, the diamond, I put it back and I shuffle my card. And pick another card, still got a diamond, and shuffle it again, and pick another card. Oh, interesting, not a diamond. Okay. So, so what's the probability that the first card will be a heart, the second will be a black card, and the third will be a face card? There are 13 hearts, so the probability that I pick a heart will be 13 divided by 52. How many black cards are there altogether? Well, there are 26 black cards, so let's see. The probability that I pick a black card will be 26 divided by 52, which is 1. Now, let me see if I can pick a black card. Okay, the probability is 0.5. Is that black? No, nope, it's not. And the probability that I pick a face card, there are only 12 face cards. Which ones are those? I'll leave you to verify and figure that out. Is that a face card? Let's see. Ah, I got it. That's Jack. Okay, so that's actually going to be face card right there. So that will be 13 divided by 52 times 26 divided by 52 times 12 divided by 52, which is 4056 divided by 140608, which is 0 0.0288 to four decimal places done. Okay, now two cards are drawn without replacement from a standard deck of playing cards, 52 playing cards, of course. What is the probability of choosing a king for the second card drawn if the first card drawn without replacement was a king? Now I have 52 playing cards right here. I select a king and I do not replace the king. What is the probability that the second card I draw at random would be a king? How many kings are left? Three kings are left. How many cards are there altogether? Left, 51. So the probability that the second card I draw would be a king would be 3 divided by 51, and that's 0 0.0588. Am I lucky? Now, let me try one more time. I need to get, get that one out because it's actually not part of it. Ah, it's a jack. Well, at least the face card is close, but not exactly. Okay, the probability is really small, so... It would have been good to have it correct, but not very easy. Now, let's go to problem number 22. Suppose you like to keep a jar of change on your desk. Currently, the jar contains a couple of coins and nickels. So we have some coins and nickels. Like I told you guys, you should always have some coins with you. Uh, nickels, dimes, quarters, and it's right there on my desk. Okay. So there are 25 pennies, 15 dimes, 24 nickels, and 25 quarters. Total are 89. Now, what is the probability that you reach into the jar and randomly grab a quarter, and then without replacement, you get a nickel? So altogether, there are 89 coins. I am looking for the probability that I randomly select a quarter. So what is that probability in the first place? It will be 25 divided by 89. But if it is a quarter and I do not replace it, what is left? I'm left with 88 coins. And how many nickels are left here? 24. 
So that will be 24 divided by 88. And since it is the word and that links both of them, it's multiplication. As you would learn, all has to do with addition and has to do with multiplication. So that will be 25 divided by 89 times 24 divided by 88, which is 600 divided by 7832, which is 0.0766. So, why don't you try a lock on that? Get 25 pennies, 15 dimes, 25 quarters, 24 nickels, and uh, do that a couple of times and see if you can actually pick a quarter and then pick a nickel. If you can do it, then you are a very lucky person. You've been able to transform 0 0.0766 probability into a win. Good luck. And numbers 23 and 24 would deal with conditional probability. Again, I need you to use the formula. You can actually look at this and use smart reasoning to get the correct answer. But at times, some students do that and they fail the problem. So I always encourage students to use the formula. The probability of A happening, given that B has already happened, is the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. Okay, that is your conditional probability. The probability of A given B is the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. Now, let's answer the first question. Mr. Connor's physics class has 81 students classified by academic year and gender as illustrated in this table. Question number one, what is the probability that he selects a female given that he chooses randomly from only the seniors okay so he is looking for the probability that he selects a female given that he has already selected a category known as seniors so by our formula that would be the probability that the student is a female and a senior at the same time divided by the probability that the person is a senior so i go back to my table what is the probability that a student is female and senior that would be seven divided by the total number of students in the class which is 81 so that is seven divided by 81 all of that divided by the probability that a student is a senior there are 15 seniors right there you can add so that would be 15 divided by 81 and when you simplify that using a simple kindergarten algebra that gives you 7 divided by 15 which is 0.4667 use the formula the second part what is the probability that he selects a senior given that he chooses a female Okay, same thing as this, but this time around, instead of female giving senior, it is senior giving female. The same thing. So the probability that we select a senior, given that females are selected, would be the probability of senior and female divided by the probability of female. So seniors that are female, again, seniors that are female, that will be 7 divided by 81, right there. Probability that the student is female, there are 44 females, so that will be 44 divided by 81. And simple kindergarten algebra would give us 7 divided by 44, which is 0 0.1591. Done. Now, let me give you another problem. You're probably wondering, this is exciting. Can I have another problem? Yes, I heard your plea, so I'm going to give you a problem. Out of 350 applicants for the job, 157 are female and 63 are females that have a graduate degree. So these 63 would be females and they have a graduate degree. So what is the probability that a randomly chosen applicant has a graduate degree given that they are female just relax smile use your conditional probability formula the probability that a student is a graduate given that the student is female equals the probability that a student is a graduate and a female at the same time divided by the probability that a student is a female so the student is a graduate and a female there are 63 options so that will be 63 divided by 350 all of that divided by the probability that the student is female there are 157 females so that will be 157 divided by 350 kindergarten algebra that will be 63 divided by 157 which gives us 0 0.4013
And step two, of course, we switch. Instead of the probability that a student is graduate and female, we are told that 115 of the applicants have graduate degrees. What is the probability that a randomly chosen applicant is female, given that the applicant has a graduate degree? So I'm looking for the probability that a student is female, given that they have a graduate degree. My conditional probability formula would be the probability of female and graduate divided by the probability of graduate. Please apply these formulas as we did in class, as we are doing right here, and you find yourself smiling throughout your Hogs assignment. So the probability that a student is female and has a graduate degree. Now, the probability that a student is female and has a graduate degree would be 63 divided by 350. And the probability that a student has a graduate degree, like 115 applicants with a graduate degree. So that would be 115 divided by 350. Again, kindergarten algebra, that would be 60. 63 divided by 115 and that gives us 0.5478 to four decimal places and ladies and gentlemen that brings us to the end of our practice session and you should be able to now complete all your hogs assignments beautiful wish you the very best if you have any questions send me an email ask me in class text me facebook whatsapp tweet whatever it is you need to do to get the answer go ahead and do it god bless you and i'll see you in the second part of chapter six counting then we will deal with the three counting techniques the fundamental rule of counting permutations and combinations beautiful times are ahead bye bye